Let's see how Monday will open. Hmm, coin says a bear. Good afternoon, and man, I am late today. I do apologize. Got struck with, thunderstruck with a headache last night. Kind of lasted through this morning. Probably just one of those stress headaches we all get and kind of lasted through the day. A couple ibuprofens and uh, uh, four or five hours later than I normally am. <laughs> here we are. Uh, beautiful day out there. It's uh, nice and warm, actually. What's the temperature here? 80 degrees in Florida, man. We're back to our warm temperatures again, and the water just looks absolutely inviting. I'd sure like to go put my feet in. I think I'll do that in the morning. Well, what's going on with prices here? It looks like we busted that 400 mark. I'm kind of glad we're doing a late report today. Normally, you know, I do them pretty much a lot earlier, uh, so <laughs> or try to get them done earlier. You know, uh, remember when I told you about psychological numbers? Uh, you know, even numbers like 1800, 1850. Not necessarily 1850 is not an even number, but uh, you know, numbers like that and how. Uh, sometimes it's just like a game. It's a psychological game, whether it closes above or below that mark. Well, here we are right now. Take a look. Uh, 1896, bordering on that $1,900 mark. What was a high? 1903 and a low of 1887 today. And currently, I believe the market's still open at 1896. I think we're going to close about this level. I can't see it going down much further. My suspicions, though, and remember, the reason I'm talking about gold mostly is because uh, silver will follow gold, even though there seems to be some lag time here. I bet we're still at 79 to 80 to 1, and gold continues to climb. Uh, if we see that next week, we're going to see that spread probably even widen, <clears throat> in my opinion. Uh, gold will move a lot faster. Silver, uh, if gold maintains uh, a higher price next week, uh, higher this level or higher, I suspect silver at some point will play catch up. Meanwhile, I think it's a good opportunity to buy silver. Uh, platinum and gold. Yeah, as I said, we're all going to look back at these prices one day and say, remember when gold or silver or platinum was such and such? <laughs> so uh, 2393 in silver right now. That's the uh, last uptick that I got. Uh, 2371 in the low, 2411 the high. Again, just sitting below that 24 mark by a little bit. We're just right below those psychological numbers of 24. Don't ask me why. And, and of uh, 1900. Platinum, <clears throat> 1,066 to 1,097, pretty good swing there. Uh, overall, down $22.23. Uh, if I was going to use a tell that I was, or a little uh, a trend that I was seeing for a while, that platinum being down on the close today might insinuate that gold and silver will be down uh, on Sunday night. And I'm sure they're going to try to monkey hammer. They do not like $24 silver. I'm sure both uh, whoever's short out there in a big way, the big commercials, are not happy with 2393 silver. And they know as well that the gold is going to drag silver price up. So they're probably going to open up both barrels, double barrels, on uh, Sunday night or Monday probably. I hope not. Let's see what happens. However, I believe if this uh, Ukraine thing kind of flattens out like I'm pretty positive it is, there's being a lot, of, lot to do about nothing really, in my opinion, a lot of posturing on both sides to kind of gain better positions. Uh, and we never should be in this uh, position to start with. Where are the hell the peacemakers, as I always say? There's nothing but war hawks out there. You know why? War is more profitable than peace. Well, let me, uh, and we have no uh, peacemakers in Washington either side anymore. Uh, so, uh, and the, one, the party that once claimed to be peacemakers, <laughs> what a laugh. Uh, but no less, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, platinum prices. Uh, yeah, $22 swing. As I said, and uh, <clears throat> if, if that's a tell, you know, I think we might see some lower prices on Sunday night or Monday. But don't trade on what I'm saying, folks. This is just my opinion. I've been doing this since uh, uh, 1977. I've been in this business second generation, so uh, and been doing it full time uh, pretty much ever since. And I know markets pretty well, but gosh, I get it wrong just as much as anyone else. So, uh, but uh, I do think we could see lower prices, especially if this Ukraine thing starts to flatten out. And not because prices should go lower because of that, only because, in my opinion, the commercials, when, when gold and silver get monkey hammered the most, and I'm sure other markets are like this, is when the news comes out. They, they find an opportunity to kind of just go in there and jump in, unload both barrels, as I said, uh, on a news event. And this news event is really... <sighs> You know, gold is before the Ukraine crisis. We were looking at a sustained move from 1850 to 1870. I think 1870 was a 200-day moving average. So, I mean, we were looking good prior to this Ukraine thing. It did shoot up a little bit because of it, but again, no less. <clears throat> I would say, uh, uh, you know, we're going to see continued higher prices. I, 
we're going to wake up one day, folks, and say, holy shit, look at the metal prices today. Look at silver. Look at gold. Look at platinum. I don't know when our holy shit day is, is but I keep feeling it's going to get closer and closer here. Let's take a look at the 24-hour charts and see where most of this action is occurring. Uh, again, flat lined out. Haven't seen that uh, uh, COMEX uh, monkey hammering going on or, you know, I haven't seen I <laughs> just haven't seen it. Look at that. I mean, for the most part, we've seen it kind of go up and move up. You know, is the CME finally cracking down on these big commercial short positions? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, but I hope so. Uh, is the CFTC probably looking at these big commercial short positions saying, hey, listen, you got to stop doing this? Uh, maybe, probably not. Well, here's an interesting divergence as well. Take a look at this. And again, you silver stackers out there, I've been telling you, follow gold, uh, silver will follow gold, okay? So keep an eye on gold prices, even if you don't own a lot of it, you don't own any of it. You need to keep an eye on gold prices because silver will go there at some point as well. It's a good tell for you, all right? Uh, take a look at this, gold really looking pretty strong. And of course, you know, these are these short positions, folks. Look at this, happens, again, happens in the comics markets, obviously. I'm gonna quit saying that because it's so obvious and we know exactly where it happens. Uh, but take a look at this, all week, silver getting knocked down, trying to pump that 40, uh, again, the slingshot, the slingshot, uh, down and back up, slingshots back up, down, slingshots back up. So <clears throat> are these these short positions trying to fill, uh, you know, fill what they need to uh, make the losses not so bad? Is BOFA, is Bank of America filled on their uh, uh, silver short position or the uh, uh, silver position that we believe that they own <clears throat> of, uh, what was it, uh, 800 million ounces, okay? Uh, let's see here. We're, was it 800 million or yeah something like that okay <laughs> 800 million ounces yeah 30 million ounces of gold or something well i forget what the gold position that they may have uh, again kind of speculative but the uh, gentleman that talks about it ted butler man he knows this stuff so i like to listen to him uh, gold one ounce bars are still the best deal out there folks if there's one thing i can do as a talking head i can tell you what the best deals are out there and uh, what to stay away from stay away from any gold products that you're having to pay more than spot plus 90 bucks in my opinion okay uh if you're paying spot plus 90 i don't care if it's silk gold eagles i don't care if it's a mape whatever it is uh you can buy gold bars out here for spot plus uh what was it 73 dollars or less now or less depending on the quantity there's no point in paying 20 and 30 and 40 dollar higher premiums higher than this okay uh you know you for every eagle and for every maple, you could probably buy one ounce of this and an ounce of silver, which represents a better deal to you, a gold eagle um, or a one ounce gold bar with a silver bar with it, okay, for the same price. Think about that for a second. Uh, let's look at silver bars and uh, best deals out there, and I have them. As you know, I'm a local brick and mortar. I only sell to local customers here in South Florida, so you don't live in my area. Uh, I, I do apologize, I can't apologize, but if I, <laughs> Uh, I don't have an online business and we don't ship and we don't do any phone business. So if you want to deal with me, you have to come in and deal with me uh, face to face and then in person, 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. Uh, same location since 1995. And uh, uh, if you don't live in my area, and, and I know a lot of you don't, and you listen to my videos or my uh, uh, podcast, whatever you want to call this, um, definitely please find a local dealer. I think it's really important, as you know, I repeat this like a broken record, but keeping that money in your community, spending it locally, you know, is so good for your communities. When you buy from these big, again, I advertise to be Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion. Uh, their prices are really good. They're honest, trustworthy companies. It's just, I'm a competitive, smaller brick and mortar, and I can beat the pants off their prices and give better service than them. And it's not, I'm not saying anything wrong with them. I just can do that. You should be able to find a local dealer that does the same, even if you have to travel an hour or so, do it for sure. Best deals out there right now, 100 ounce bars by far the best deal that we can get you um, as far as a recognizable product at a low premium. When I say recognizable product, I mean recognizable by industry people, not by your neighbor. Uh, so 100 ounce bars are the best deal out there at spot plus $3 or less. I mean, you can't beat that uh, given that uh, Silver Eagles are a spot plus $8.50, $9.50. And I love Silver Eagles, beautiful design, Buy America, and I'm big Buy American, as you know, Buy Local, as I always say. But <clears throat> when you have to pay three times the premium for the same amount of silver, I just can't in good conscience uh, advise people to do that. Silver Eagles are overpriced, so are maples and other things. Uh, 10 ounce bars, I can sell 10 ounce and 100 ounce bars for the same price. And, uh, uh, and in quantity, I could sell them for less as well. So good deals out there. I think spot plus three bucks for tens and, and hundreds is what we have. Uh, and uh, spot, I believe that's correct. And spot plus 350 for uh, uh, one ounce rounds or less. Uh, and your local dealer should be able to do the same. 
And where are we going to go from here? I'm curious to see what the stock market did today. Boy, my throat got a little dry. I'm going to reach over here. Ready? You can hear me reaching because my voice will get further and further away. There we go. Grab my coffee over here. I, I know, right? Afternoon, I'm still drinking coffee. <clears throat> got a dry throat here, though. Mm. Sorry about that. I should play hold music when I'm doing that. Uh, it looks like the market across the board in the red. Of course, I believe that there's a lot of intervention going into the equity markets right now in the bond markets. We know that the Fed intervenes. We know government intervenes uh, in everything now. So why wouldn't they be intervening on a falling equities market? They'll probably do the same thing with real estate at some point if they need to. And uh, my opinion is, is that they learned maybe from 2008 that they don't want this. You see the balloon right here? They don't want that instantaneous 2,000 point drop or the Dow to drop 20% in three weeks. What they want is this. They just want a slow, uh, here we go, this is what they want. They want a slow deflation. You know how when you have a balloon three days later you come out and slowly deflate it. It's hard to be really pissed all at once. You watch it happen slowly. Uh, and I think that's what they're doing. They're slowly deflating the balloon in equities uh, <clears throat> rather than letting it collapse all the time. But it tells me I, fe I feel clear in my mind, in my heart, that they are intervening in equities markets to prevent that major crash that they don't want to see happen. All of a sudden, you've got a major liquidity crisis as well. So they're slowly letting the air of the balloon by maybe propping that market up a little bit. And I could be wrong on this. Purely speculative conspiracy on my part. Ah, uh, Bitcoin, I'm really surprised uh, for a couple reasons. You know, fo most of you folks know I'm not a big fan of it, you know, but then again, um, I'm, I'm really uh, got to give kudos to anyone out there that's made good money in Bitcoin. Um, and most of them were probably people that bought at the very low and sold out the very high. Um, the average traders out there, you know, they may have made some money, but again, very volatile, almost like a casino in my opinion, the volatility there. And the percentage of losing your money is just as great. Uh, again, too volatile for my taste. But the, one of the big things that the Bitcoin fanatics would talk about is, uh, or B Bitcoin bugs would talk about, would be, uh, uh, you know, how it's better than gold. It's the new gold. Well, folks, <clears throat> if you haven't been paying attention to Bitcoin prices and gold for the last couple months, you'll see that people do not flee to Bitcoin when, you know, you know when, when times get tough. Where do they go? They go to the same place they have for 5,000 years. They go to gold and silver, not Bitcoin. People are smart enough to know that. Uh, is Bitcoin, you know, going to be go away? I doubt it. It's going to be here to stay, but it'll be just a, you know, I think uh, Mr. Munger, uh, um, Warren Buffett's partner, said the other day that, uh, um, he said, we already have digital, digital currencies. It's called a bank account. <laughs> and you know what? It's funny as strange as that sound, he was right. It really is. That's what Bitcoin is a bank account, man. It's a savings account, a checking account. Uh, <clears throat> and anyone thinks that they can't take it away from you has to look at what's going on with the Canadian truckers. You know, when they started getting rid of the GoFundMe, everyone said, oh, go Bitcoin. And then we find out that uh, uh, the Canadian government basically just took all the Bitcoin places out there and basically going to close them down to some degree if they're involved with this type of thing. Uh, so anyway, that won't happen. They're, I'm sure they're not going to go door to door to grab people's gold. Never going to happen. Well, let's take a look at uh, a great article on GATA.org. Look how long this is, too. Don't get sick by me spinning it fast, but it's a wonderful article. Uh, I highly recommend you read it. Uh, again, not homework. Nobody likes homework, nor do I, but uh, recommended reading for the weekend. And then I'm going to give you the uh, Earl for this. Um, one of the things, uh, like here, I like this end part. We suggest one keeps identity straight, invest with central banks, not against them, and consider the hollow rhetoric of an establishment that may temporarily suppress its paper price a gift. They are working for physical gold holders, not against them. Great comment, Lee Quaintance and Paul Brodsky. Uh, huh, uh, that's really, it is a gift. And the, this suppression, I know a lot of people complain about it, but the suppression that we've been seeing for years and years by the big commercial uh, banks on the, uh, in Comex, really have provided a lot of us with the gift, okay? Uh, maybe if you were buying gold and silver and you only have two or three years to live, you, and that was a year ago, <laughs> you'd be a little bit upset. I mean, again, who knows how long we, we could all go tomorrow, but uh, no less, uh, I think that was really sage advice there. It's a gift, it really is. The suppression of gold and silver prices is a gift for us to buy it, and gift for people that haven't figured it out yet to still buy at this point. 
Um, they talk about a key to a successful transition as a credible monetary reset. The article touches also on how governments are going to reprice the official price of gold. Now, if I'm correct, the official price of gold that the United States own, if we own any, and if there's anything in Fort Knox, is around $42 per ounce. So think about that. They can reprice their assets and totally make a deficit kind of smaller, I think, or make the uh, what they owe smaller looking at least. And uh, gr again, I can't stress enough. I, I'd love to read this to you, but it would be an hour-long read. Take a look at this. Uh, close your eyes if you get dizzy. I'm going to go to the top of the page because I want to show you where this is. A QB Asset Management. I don't know who they are, but it was super well written. And you know where you can read it for free? On GATA.org. If, if you read anything all week, this is it when it comes to precious metals. Love, great, great article. Can't say it enough times. Uh, GATA.org. Take a look at my bookmark bar. Is a free site to uh, go to, GATA.org. These are the guys that understand how the gold market has been manip manipulated. And my favorite person telling me how the silver markets are manipulated is Ted Butler. So I go to the two different sources for, for those kind of things. But highly recommend you read this. Brodsky and Quaintance, central banks aim to redistribute gold and push it way up. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, I'm not going to make it a news day because it's just depressing. Uh, maybe that's why I had the stress headache last night. All the stuff going on just nonstop, man. These people just are relentless here. Um, uh, uh, this is just relentless, this, this Ukraine thing. It's just posturing. It's just wasting resources and getting people pissed at each other and creating new cold wars and new enemies. Where to F are the peacemakers out there, folks. Please, really, where are they? they we certainly didn't elect any. Uh, the only ones out there that I consider peacemakers in both parties was Rand Paul and uh, Tulsi Gabbards. I'm sorry, but it's true. They were the only somewhat, I won't say anti-war, but anti-stupid war people that we have in, in, uh, in the Senate, okay, and the Congress. Uh, so Tulsi Gabbards and, and Rand Paul. What, <laughs> strange dichotomy there, but uh, or dichotomy and insurance, that's the right word, but strange combination there, but man, uh, as far as the uh, uh, anti-stupid war uh, messages, they were the best and the only smart people we have in D.C. when it comes to that, in my opinion. Uh, if you got any other thoughts and you think there's someone out there that's not, you know, uh, anti, who, if you think there's any other politicians out there that are anti-stupid war, remember, let me preface stupid, anti-stupid war, you let me know, okay? Put it in the comment section down below. Uh, great, well, here. As far as Ukraine goes, I'm going to get out of that because I'm just sick of talking about it. And, you know, war sickens me and war hawks sicken me even more. You know, you know when, when they don't even try peace, they don't even try uh, diplomacy, bastards. Anyway, see how passionate I get about this. Uh, nothing really good. I'm looking at uh, news here. And again, jeez, oh, F Facebook in my opinion, you know. This is probably one of their people that, uh, <laughs> anyways, never mind. Uh, let's uh, take a look here. Nah, I'm going to kind of move along here. And uh, again, no, no good news. In fact, nothing but bad news out here and just propaganda bullshit as far as uh, trying to get people agitated and worked up. Um, all right. Yesterday's video, remember when silver was only, <laughs> and as I said many, many times, folks, you're going to say that about today's prices. You're going to say, remember when silver was, you know, remember back in, in uh, 2022, silver was this or gold was this uh, and platinum was this. Mark my words, you will say that. It'll be considerably lower that you'll be talking about, too, because prices in the future, I think, are going to go considerably higher. This is just my opinion, of course. I'm going to read a few comments here, and let me sort by newest first. Um, again, sorry about the lateness. Look at this. I've just completed this video at 4 p.m. I am, my apology on that, folks. Um, let's see here. I did sort my newest uh, first, and I'm going to run through a few comments because I don't think this video is too long, actually. So i got a few minutes. Uh, again, and close your eyes if you get dizzy. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I've got so many comments here that I'm not going to be able to answer every one of these, but I'd like to acknowledge everyone that you see here. Uh, boy, my phone's just ringing off the hook at the end of the day here. Let me just turn that off. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, I did. Death from a thousand cuts. Boy, sometimes I get my brain, <laughs> my brain, my brain goes blank sometimes. I did that yesterday when I was trying to think of that uh, phrase, that death from a thousand cuts. That's what I was referring to with the stock market. That's an uh, equities market. I think that's how it's going to drop or die, the sl them slowly letting out the air, the death of a thousand cuts. Thank you, Heart of Texas. Appreciate you for helping me out with that. Um, again, I don't, I don't always mention you guys, but I'd like to uh, acknowledge, I thank you, all of you, for your comments here. 
And uh, let's see, silver is a steel. By the way, folks, you can learn a lot by reading the comment section here. And a lot of the people here are really cool. And I don't see much of the fighting and bickering you see in other places. So I got to thank all my commenters out there. You guys are great. Um, Celeste, you as well. He started no wars, OK. Uh, he tried to end others, but ran out of time. China was backing off. Uh, I kind of agree with that. He did. He didn't start any wars, but I think he got sucked into it, Celeste, especially when he, when he threw off a, a bunch of bombs in Syria under the false pretense that uh, they were chemical bombing someone. But I think he got played on that one. Um, let's see here. By now, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, strong, um, hmm. you, you like platinum at these price levels. I do, Strongman. I can't tell you why. I just think, you know, I'm, I'm, I went through the days when platinum was 100 and 200 bucks over the price of silver, I mean, gold for the longest time. Uh, and to see platinum just like half that price just blows my mind. It's, uh, uh, and it, it, I think platinum has its strategic uses as well as palladium. Uh, and I like platinum. I like platinum at this, uh, these levels. Other than, you know, the only reason I can tell you why is my gut tells me it just seems cheap. Uh, and again, thanks for commenting there. Uh, let's see here. Again, I'd like to thank all you guys. Uh, I'm going down here. I'm looking for some questions. Uh, let's say, Rideshare in 101 says, Silver screams up to an insane amount of $150 per ounce. Will shops like yours buy them back at spot, knowing it could correct down? Shops can't stay in business if they buy at $150 and it goes down $100. Uh, I've seen that happen. When I watched Silver in 19, I saw the same thing happen in 2012. I've been through these two of these markets, ride-sharing. Um, and ideally, if you're a smart dealer, and we, we, my father was in 1980, I wasn't. <laughs> 2012, I kind of wrote it down personally somewhat, but that's all right. I kind of just maintained my ounces and increased them since then. Uh, that's been my way to, uh, 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 you know, get past that. But uh, uh, ideally, a lot of these big guys, JM, Atmex, SD, these guys are leveraged, I believe, to some degree, or they offset their positions by hedging. Uh, so, you know, their money is made on the big, on the percentage they make over uh, the gold price. Uh, again, if they're hedged properly and they've done it cheap enough. Uh, but a lot of smaller dealers out there will tend to either ride it down. Uh, but the smart thing to do is, you know, for me in 2012, if I had a crystal ball, what I would have done, but who can have a crystal ball knowing that JP Morgan was going to ruin the market in 2012 and get fined for it? And <laughs> anyways, I, I'm not going there again. Uh, but in 2012, had I known J.P. Morgan was going to crash the market with their shenanigans just to make themselves richer, uh, I probably would have sold off most of my physical metals. And again, metal is like cash, all right? Even if it's trading at a lower price, there's always someone out there that's going to buy it. And a lot of times, the bigger guys that will buy it will off, you know, will hedge it as well. So uh, that's where a lot of that stuff will end up in hedging. But uh, you're right. You don't want to lose money, and uh, you're working on the big here. Thanks for thanks for commenting, Rod Chair. Good question too. Uh, please wait. I think that may be true, Tim. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, it's about to break 24. I think uh, interesting comment. Thank you, P2RP. And uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna make my head swell. Let's see. Again, if I don't mention your name, please. I want you. Know, I want to thank. I'd like to mention every single name here and and, and talk. And, and read every one of these uh, uh, comments, but it's just not possible. The war is a head fake to a raise oil prices for Russia. That's interesting. Joe's kid was on board. His dad shut down the pipeline. Interesting. Uh, thank you, uh, Daryl. And um, uh, I don't know if I could answer that question, John. Let me see here. Uh, Kim says, constructive criticism alert. Uh, 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 uh. Brian, can you limit your vids to 10 or 12 minutes? It's torture listening to blah, blah, blah for 30 minutes. Blah. Oh, Kim, is that what you think I do for 30 minutes is blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. Uh, and it's nice that you're a neighbor and customer as well. My subscriber base might increase, but likely not as well. You, you'd be surprised how many people say I should go longer, man. It's really, and it's not me. I'm not a sound bite type of uh, uh, talking head on YouTube. I'm not. I don't script them. I'm not a sound bite. I think about what I'm going to say. It's, it's built up in my mind from the day before, and then I just let it fly. You <laughs> let the shit fly out of my mouth. Uh, and if it takes me 15 minutes to do it or 45 minutes to do it, it is what it is. But sorry, Kim, I will never be a sound bite talking head. It's just never going to happen. But thanks for watching and thanks for being a customer. Um, I like palladium too. I just, yeah, I wish you didn't sell it at 650 as well. <laughs> um, my, LC, my local coin should have a run on the shop. Seems the shop will sell any gold I may have, but I can't buy any. Silver, anything I want, sterling coins. My hometown is 800 miles from any large city. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I get it, Russell. In that case, you're kind of stuck buying online sometimes. But I'm glad you have someone you can go to um, uh, for silver or something. Well, that's it. 
I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. It looks like it's going to be in the 80s here in Florida. So uh, Sunday we're going to get some uh, windy weather out there and some uh, waves. But uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I could use a break, man. I need to get out of town as well. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day. And don't forget, think for yourself. Always question authority um, and uh, question your own narrative. Maybe what you're thinking in your head is not an original thought by you, but something someone else planted there. Well, that's it. If you need me, call me at 954-493-8811. If you're buying or selling precious metals here in South Florida, again, if you don't live in South Florida, please find a good local dealer. That's all I can recommend right now. And uh, that's it. I'm ready to go. You are, and we're ready to, thank God it's Friday. Talk to you Monday. Have a great day. Bye now.